Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world. Now if you haven't seen any of my previous videos in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least check out the unboxing video just to give you an overview of the puzzle in general. And sometimes I forget to mention the puzzle is from Graphica. So, I'm really excited for today's video and I hope it doesn't end up being too long because I actually have some notes for the intro. Usually I have notes for my outro, but I have notes for things I want to mention now before I even start the puzzle. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I want to do is a quick shout out to the viewer called, well they go by the name Fellow Human. They suggested that I get a photographer's gray non-reflective paper to use as, you know, to cover the surface that I puzzle on. And right off the bat, I'm so pleased that I've done it because I can already tell it's easier on my eyes from the lighting and the overhead lighting. There's no glare, there's no reflection from that white foam board I was using. There may be less of a difference between this background and the background of this particular puzzle, but I mean, it's background pieces. They drive me crazy, so pff, I'll just speed up that section of the time lapse. So bear with me, it's my first time doing a video with this new background color. I hope it's better, I hope it removes glare, I hope it's easier on my eyes. So thank you very much to fellow human for suggesting that, I really, really appreciate it. So today, I'm starting the seventh bag, which is actually section two of the puzzle. This right here, two big lovely paintings. One of course is the Mona Lisa and the other one is another from Arsimboldo. I hope I said that correctly. We saw a painting of his in the last section that I completed. Now if we pull out our panoramic poster here of the entire puzzle, gosh that is, that's so big, hard to stay in frame, um, you'll see that this section is the top part here, right here. So I've completed these first three, I've done the bottom and the middle, and now the top. The reason why it's the seventh bag is previously I did one of the bookshelf sections, and I do believe after this section I'm going to do another bookshelf. It just breaks it up and I, I really enjoyed doing the bookshelf section. The reason why I'm so excited about this bag, this section, is because once I've done these six sections, I'm going to take my much loved puzzle off this wall and I'm going to put them up on the wall. So I'll be showing that at the end of the video. I've gotten some poster strips, poster hanging strips. I'll show a picture of those. Um, I hope they work. I'm not sure, this is a test. I'd like them to be able to stay up on the wall for 48 to 72 hours. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, if they fall off, they don't get damaged too badly. Um, but I need to test to see how I can mount such a large scale puzzle to the wall. Remember when I did the second bag, section 10, I couldn't hide it, but I was slightly disappointed about the color blending between that sections and the other ones that it connected with. I've kind of gotten over that, I've moved on, but I thought I want to talk about it one last time, just revisit the idea of how printing and cutting large-scale puzzles are, the difficulty of it all. Now the only experience I have with such a large-scale puzzle is this 5,000 piece behind me. Now, it was all in one bag, so I can't actually tell you if it was printed in sections. However, when you look at the puzzle, you can take pieces, say, from the top right corner, rotate them, and they fit perfectly in the bottom left. And what we did discover, my husband and I, as we stood back, we realized that the puzzle is divided in two, and one section, if you completely rotate it, it lines up with the other section. So I looked closely at this puzzle. I do not see any color blending issues whatsoever. Had my hubby look at it, he thought the colors blended right down the middle, no problem. Then I looked at piece alignment, and most 
everywhere the pieces actually line up perfectly and then all of a sudden there'll be one or two pieces down the middle that that don't line up but I never even really noticed that or paid attention to it at the time that I put the puzzle together because it didn't stand out it wasn't it's not obvious it's not everywhere so from my experience doing one large puzzle no color blending issues no real piece alignment issues um, and I can't even really tell you if it was printed in two prints or one large print, but definitely it was cut using the same, what's it called? The thing that they used to cut die, the die, the same die cut, die cast. I'm not sure. Something that I got to look up. It was definitely used cutting the same thing. It was just rotated and cut again. So I decided I needed to reach out to people who are more familiar with this process. So I actually did contact Graphica and they did get back to me on the matter. So stay tuned at the end of the video and I'll discuss that. And as well, I thought, you know who's done a lot of big jigsaw puzzles? Vicky from Vicky Makes and Builds. Now, I'm sure if you're here watching my videos that you know already about Vicky and you've probably seen plenty of her videos, but if not, I'll leave the link to her YouTube channel in the description below. Please go check her out. Give her a like, give her a subscribe, tell her I sent you and said hello. She has done so many large scale puzzles, 5,000, 9,000, I don't know, 13,000. Whew. And I thought I'll reach out and I'll ask her. She was so amazing. She sent me photos. She gave me tons of information. So I'll also add that at the end of the video because once I have these six sections mounted on the wall, I'll be able to better visualize the color blending. And to tell you the truth, I didn't even really pay too much attention to piece alignment. I think the color blending is what stood out more to me, but also once it's on the wall, I want to like stand back at various distances and get a feel if it, if it really is so noticeable or not. So I thought this will be the last time I'll address the matter. Why not reach out to Graphica, see what they have to say. I'm so pleased they got back to me and right off the bat, and I'll repeat this again. This is by no means like a major issue or complaint. I love, love this puzzle. I love the experience their customer service and their social media people have been amazing. They've answered all my questions. Seriously, by no means has this diminished my enjoyment of doing this puzzle overall. I absolutely love it. Is there anything else that I had to mention? I don't think so. That was about it. That's enough for an intro already. So for the love of puzzles, let's get to building bag number seven, which is section two, as we travel around art. The first painting we have in this section of the puzzle is the Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece of Italian Renaissance. It's known in French as Jaconde and in Italian as Gioconda. It has been described as the best known, the most visited, the most written about, the most sung about, and the most parodied work of art in the world. It's a half length portrait painting of approximately 77 by 53 centimeters in size. It has been definitively identified to depict Italian noblewoman Lisa Gerardini. She was the wife of Francesco del Giocondo. Now, Leonardo never actually gave this painting to the Giocondo family. And then later it is believed that he left it in his will to his favorite apprentice, Saleh. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's believed to have been painted between 1503 and 1506. However, according to what I read online, Leonardo may have continued working on it until as late as like 1517 or maybe even until 1519. It was acquired by King Francis I of France and is now the property of the French Republic. It's been on permanent display at the Louvre in Paris, France since 1797. The painting's novel qualities include the subject's enigmatic expression, meaning that it's difficult to interpret, the monumentality of the composition, the subtle modeling of forms, and the atmospheric illusionism. I don't quite understand what all that means, 
But this is how I find it described online and why I go find information on sites like Wikipedia and the Google's Arts and Culture website because I am not an art historian. <laughs> I would never be able to describe these paintings the way that I find others describing them. And it's just using such beautiful words and adjectives. I love it. Now, the Mona Lisa is one of the most valuable paintings of the world, if not the most valuable painting. Last I checked, it held the Guinness World Record for the highest known painting insurance valuation in history. In 1962, it was evaluated at 100 million US dollars, which would be equivalent to 870 million US dollars in 2021. Often people, when they look up the painting online, they actually see a digitally retouched version of it, which reduces the effect of aging and brightens it up, brings out like more shape in her, her dress, for example. But the actual unretouched painting is quite a bit darker, which is why I've seen many people comment when they've tried to do like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle of the Mona Lisa, how very difficult it is because of all the dark sections. Most likely the jigsaw puzzle is depicting more a true version of the unretouched painting. The next painting in this section of the puzzle is another one from Giuseppe Alcimboldo. We were introduced to him in the last section I completed. Alcimboldo was employed as a conventional court painter of portraits, who actually many thought was a bit of a man-man because his paintings depict portraits of people composed of like fruit, vegetables, fish, and flowers. Now this painting is called Veltumnus and it's approximately 56 by 68 centimeters in size. It consists of multiple fruits and vegetables, flowers, that come together to create a portrait of the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II. Now in Roman mythology, Vertumnus is the god of seasons, change and plant growth, as well as like gardens and fruit trees. Alcimboldo's colleagues commented that the painting was humorous, but there were intentional political meanings behind the piece. The portrait is meant as an imperial allegory corresponding with Alcimboldo's series of the seasons. Now we saw the spring painting in the last section of the jigsaw puzzle. This painting here represents the emperor as seen as the ruler of all the seasons. The variety of the flowers and the fruit from all the seasons signify a golden era has returned under the emperor's rule. It was also described as displaying Rudolf II's metamorphosis of power over the world for a ruler. Now it was painted in 1591 and was presented to Rudolf II after its completion. Its ownership shifted to the Swedish army after the Thirty Years' War. I guess people kind of lost track of the Vertumnus painting after this shift though, but it reappeared in 1845 in Sweden in Skokloster Castle. And I guess it's still currently located there today. It is considered to be Asimbolo's most famous painting. So I reached out to Grafica and I explained to them what I saw between the sections, that the colors do not blend very well and appeared like distinct lines. At the time, I didn't mention the piece misalignment as to tell you honestly, I didn't even really notice it at first. And to me, it's not a major issue in my opinion. Some areas align perfectly, others are slightly off, but it doesn't affect the puzzle negatively in my opinion, at least what I can tell so far from all the sections I've completed. Now, this is what Grafica responded to my inquiry about the color blending between sections. This is something that can happen due to the size of the puzzle, as it cannot be printed as a whole in one time. We'll discuss that with the manufacturer to check if something can be improved. Have a lovely time puzzling! Now, I really appreciate them getting back to me, and I do fully understand how this can be attributed to the printing process of large puzzles in multiple sections just like the cutting of a large puzzle. I like that they said they would discuss this with the manufacturer to see if anything can be improved. Now, I do wonder if Grafica designs their puzzles and then they have like a third party to print and cut them, 
or if they just have like a manufacturing department. I, I keep coming up with more questions to ask them seriously. But overall, you know, they've been great. They've answered all my questions and have been supportive of, of my videos and my journey assembling this puzzle. So I just want to thank Graphica very much, not only for their great customer service, but also for making this amazing puzzle. And I reached out to Vicki from Vicki Makes and Bills as she has done so many large scale puzzles. She was so great and got back to me with so much information and even pictures. Now first, she has mostly noticed piece misalignment in the large puzzles that she's done. This seems to be a common issue across various sizes and manufacturers. For example, these images are from Educa's 6,000 piece entering the bedroom jigsaw puzzle. You can see where the piece is misaligned. She assumes that this is where the puzzle was cut, but it actually all came in one bag, so it's hard to tell. Next, we have some of her photos from Clementoni's 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra jigsaw puzzle. Again, you can see where there is piece misalignment. In both of these puzzles though, she didn't see any color blending issues. The images are quite busy, which helps at reducing this issue. The one puzzle she did notice like a color discrepancy was in Ravensburger 9,000 piece Disney Museum jigsaw puzzle. It also did have piece misalignment issues. You can see the bottom edge doesn't match up perfectly. And she felt that the pieces along the join also squeezed together kind of awkwardly. Now to her, it felt like the right side of the puzzle was lighter in color than the left, but it wasn't all that noticeable once you got a bit back, a bit distance from the puzzle. She had to take a screenshot of this puzzle from one of her videos as she doesn't actually have the puzzle, actual puzzle anymore. So from her experience, piece misalignment is a common occurrence in large puzzles, color blending not so much, but could that be perhaps due to the images in the large puzzles she's done, like very busy images? She said that even if there were color blending issues, she wouldn't easily notice them. So for example, here's her image of Clementoni's 6,000 piece Venice sunset. You can see the piece in the middle there, it doesn't fit together nicely, but the color across the picture just seems perfect. She did also talk about Ravensburger and she felt how clever they were when it comes to their larger jigsaw puzzles. They tend to have like a, a natural line down the middle of the image or like a dark patch or a dividing line or, or something else that's neutral. So you can see this in the Disney Museum 9000 piece, in the Minions 9000 piece, and in the Underwater Paradise 9000 piece. This is most likely due to like the two sides having been maybe printed separately, cut separately. And perhaps it's their way of avoiding potential image mismatches between the two sides. Now to me, in my opinion, the divides in those larger like Minions and Underwater Paradise puzzles, so much more obvious than any of the sections from this travel around art jigsaw puzzle. All of this said though, it doesn't mean that one will enjoy a puzzle less. If you love the image and the subject matter, you will love putting the puzzle together. It just goes to show that it's an issue in general when printing and cutting large jigsaw puzzles and something to note. Different manufacturers handle it differently and that's it pretty much. But again, how amazing is Vicky for providing me with all this information and the photos. I can't thank her enough. She's currently working on Educa's 33,600 piece wildlife jigsaw puzzle. Now at the time that I'm recording this, she had only completed one section so far, so she couldn't give an opinion about piece misalignment or color blending. It is a very busy picture from what I can tell with lots of green. So go check out her journey as she assembles that large puzzle on her YouTube channel. It's on the wall. It may not be perfect, but it's on the wall. Wow. So first thing, I did measure the wall. I did not take into account the outlet. And so obviously the wall in the end was not wide enough. I had stopped after I did the first um, one and a half kind of panels. And then I thought, you know what, let's go crazy. And I curved it along the corner of the wall. I am so impressed. 
um, how well it's up there. Now, I'm not tall enough to get my arm down the back to um, push these pieces in together. So just note that this is curved along the corner of the wall. This is not a representation of how well the pieces sink into one another. This was my poor calculation. I only measured once and ended up cutting 50 times, but I forgot about the outlet. However, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, we wanted to talk about color blending and piece alignment. When I stand back and I look at this, I look at the Mona Lisa, I look at the paintings, I look at the frame. I obviously am drawn to, you know, the ornate background on the walls. But when it comes to really the shading between the sections, there's some areas that are more noticeable than others, but I quickly move past that. It, it, it doesn't bother me because there's so much else to look at that it doesn't bother me at all. It almost feels like, oh, okay, yeah, it's there. I did have issues, for some reason, this corner right here. I don't think I have any misfits in puzzle pieces because the ones along the edge do have a bit of the frame from this picture on it. Um, let's face it, I was by myself. It's a bit tricky. If I were to do a permanent installation of this somewhere or more long term, um, each section I have in four separate smaller sections, but I would probably tape it up to be one large section, um, maybe even glue the front of each section, have help putting it up on the wall, it would probably look a lot better. So I did have a bit of issue in this corner here. Now, up here, it's not too bad, but I have a bit of a bubble. And I was trying really hard to smooth everything out, and I do know it's not perfectly aligned. Again, if I had help, it would probably have gone a lot faster and easier, but I think I did pretty good on my own. However, if I just push that bubble down, and if I were to put some sticky stuff at the back, I think it would lay flat. So it's not a, not a big deal. It's not, there's just a little bit of a bubble here. Not a big deal. It could be attributed to one thing. So this is the latest section that I did. And I hadn't actually connected it to any of the other adjacent sections before putting it up on the wall. It had quite a bit of beige background pieces. Looking at it now, I know you can't see, but I can see, I think I can pick out two pieces right here and here that are misfits. I think they swap, and I think that'll make the fit of this section work better, which could be contributing to the bubble. There could be some other misfits as well, because there's so many pieces that were just plain beige background. Um, so once I take this off, I'm going to fiddle with those pieces to see. However, I do want to leave it up on the wall for, for a while, <laughs> for a long while. Um, when it comes to piece alignment, to tell you the truth, um, this way horizontally seems pretty good. It's a bit more of a challenge vertically. And to, honestly, I mean, looking here though, at these two sections, I hardly see any misalignment whatsoever. Actually, looking at that now, that's perfect. That's perfect. I think I have some misalignment here, but I have some misfits. Um, horizontally, that looks... Where's... See, I can't even... I'm like, where's... I think the piece alignment on this puzzle is really quite good. And I think in the areas where I have a few problems, just a few, I think it might be attributed to maybe some <laughs> misfits of pieces. This is the only section right now that I can see that some noticeable piece alignment. Let's discount the curve on the wall because obviously that's just from my mounting. Um, there are some maybe between these two bottom sections here. It's not, yeah, that's definitely not aligned as nicely. But then I look at these two sections and it's perfect. So, you know, some perfect, some not so perfect. Horizontally, some perfect, some that looks good. Horizontally, it all looks really good. The vertically, I don't have enough maybe information to see because this, these two sections look misaligned, but these two sections look perfect. And these two sections, I think I have some false fits. So could I potentially have false fits down here? Maybe, 
But let's face it, this is a humongous puzzle. Right now we have six sections, 12,000 pieces up on this wall. And I think overall, I love it. It looks amazing. I even, I even kind of like the curve. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't dismantle my big rig here because it's in the perfect position. So um, I didn't want to move it. So I'm sorry that that's in the shot. You get the background view of the gloriousness that is um, time-lapse puzzle um, filming. But yeah, I, I'm disappointed. I could have probably taken off the outlet, covered it up, and pushed this all over. But it is what it is, and maybe it protects these, this side of the puzzle better not being right up against the wall. And hopefully that won't stress those being bent too much. It's a good test to see. Hopefully none of them fall off the wall. I might ask my husband to hop up on a chair or something and see if he can help me align these pieces a bit better just to make it look nicer. But I like that it's at least a dark area. I can't even tell now if you can even see what I'm talking about on camera. But overall, in conclusion, some areas between sections, perfect piece alignment. Some areas have issues. Some areas, I think I have some false fits due to the beige background pieces. And it's more noticeable now once I try connecting them. So I'll revisit those and swap some pieces around to see if it works better. better. Miss, but does that bother me? No. The color blending, yes, at first, kind of shocked me. I was disappointed. Putting it all together and standing back, though, nah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, the color blending is there. Yes, it can be noticeable. But I find you quickly move on to, oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? Oh, my goodness, you know? There's so much else to look at and to distract you that that's just minor. And it's the complexities of printing and cutting such a large jigsaw puzzle. It's still up on the wall. It's been about 24 hours. It's hanging there perfectly. I am worried that I'm stressing some of the pieces where there's the bubble and around the curve. So I'm gonna try to leave it for another day or two, but then I may take it down just cause I don't wanna stress the pieces all that much. And really it's, it's a mounting issue, not like a piece uh, misalignment issue. The only thing that I do have to look into are the few pieces right there that I know I have of some misfits. I have just a few notes. I know this video is already getting long, so let's get to it. It took me 15 hours and 40 minutes to do this section of the jigsaw puzzle. It's, it's a medium hard section, similar to that second bag, section 10. Mostly due to the darkness of the Mona Lisa took a bit of time. I definitely would not want to do a thousand piece Mona Lisa jigsaw puzzle, that's for sure. The frame, very ornate, but repetitive. So I just needed to take my time. When I grabbed a piece, I knew, you know, there's only so many places it could go if I recognized it. And I just had to take my time working through the pieces, but I enjoyed doing both of them very much. It was the last three hours and 48 minutes spent on the remaining beige background pieces. I did as many as I could that had detail and shade differences, but after that, everything blended in together. I tried to look at prong shapes and, and piece sizes, and remember a few videos ago, I mentioned that I found a pattern. Where did the pattern go? I don't know. I mean, I still figured out like what I call tall pieces versus wide pieces, which direction they went on the puzzle, but that was about it. I just had to grind and slug through, but I had a moment of genius. I was taking a piece and trying it in several places. And then for some reason I decided, well, why not remove a piece from the puzzle that's already in position and try it against all the pieces I have remaining on my foam board to see which one fits next to it. Once I did that, it was so much faster because all the pieces were nice on my black foam board and I just went through and tried them one after the other. Boom. I'm going to definitely use that technique in the future. I don't know if I saw someone else do it or someone mentioned it to me. If so, thank you but definitely worth it because it probably saved me another hour or two in those last pieces. I love this section also because even though they're two portraits, the frames are very different 
and the styles are so different. So I love the similarities, but the differences between these two paintings. It was really enjoyable to do. The only thing are those, those background pieces just, yeah, took some extra work. But that's it. And so I just want to say thank you again to fellow human for the suggestion of the photographer's gray background paper to use. Although these pieces do kind of blend in with it, it's just the background pieces. Overall, it was so much easier on my eyes, so much easier to film, less glare, less reflection. I'm definitely keeping it. Also, thank you to Graphica for always answering all my questions and getting back to me. I really appreciate it. And let's not forget Vicki from Vicki Makes and Builds. She was such great help, provided so much information and photos. I really appreciate it. You know, go check out her YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. And of course, to you all for watching. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao!